look in the mirror Man, you're so dirty Yeah, you look so dirty You were never worthy Lately, it's you Welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show If you are easily triggered, leave now Because this is not the show for you Now, in this um topic today we're going to be discussing I'm going to discuss all the waves of feminism now let me first say this right here anytime you meet a modern woman black women in particular or any type of ethnic group and they are the women that say that they are boss divas boss chicks or i am an independent woman i am a strong black woman i can do bad by myself i'm better off single all that is telling you that those are indicators of a woman who is a feminist okay i'm gonna talk about how the third wave of feminism promoted lifestyles of promiscuity i'm gonna talk about the second wave of feminism that promoted different types of rights and we might even cover the first wave okay which is very interesting i'm gonna have some facts data and statistics along with clips that are going to be provided in this reaction video so give me a moment to pull it up and we're gonna dive deep into this so i can tell you how this shit came about to where we are dealing with the type of women that we're dealing with right now jack so hold on for one second as i pull it up we're gonna get started You realize that men don't care about status or money after i got out of college after you got out and of college was telling people about my degree and they was like so what who gives a fuck man would you say feminism lied to you um about what men find attractive because feminism tells women make money get a status men are going to be attracted to i that. would say that and i will also say like how i was raised i was raised by an independent strong oh, tough queen. black woman so that's the problem this young black lady was raised by another feminist. Okay, she is a feminist herself because she was taught the doctrine. She was indoctrinated with feminism, which I'm going to pull up on the screen after this particular clip. But what she said in the beginning, she said in the beginning that men do not care about women education. Men do not care about their careers. We don't care about how much money you make. You know who cares about that? The women who practice feminism. That only matters to women, especially but it's only special to you. We don't care about that. So feminism doesn't work with masculinity and it doesn't work with femininity either. Feminism has this thing where it looks like masculinity when it's not masculinity. It's unnatural. You get what I'm saying? It's not natural to be a feminist. That's why women who are feminine cannot deal with feminism. You get what I'm saying? But we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Hold on. And so now that I'm in my 30s, I'm learning to sit in my soft girl era and my femininity. And it's tough to have those conversations with your mom. Like, you taught me to be like a strong, independent black woman, and nobody wants that. Ooh, wow. That's the reality. Oh, wow. Honestly, wow. Man, I like That's it. true. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Now, any woman, again, who thinks she is an independent woman, any woman who says that is a feminist. And the thing is, a lot of times, women, they're ignorant. They don't know that that is feminism, they don't know that. The younger black women, the younger whatever, they just think they're being independent. They just think they're being boss divas and boss chicks, but they don't understand the foundation of that mentality. It's feminism. So let's go ahead and get into this right now on the screen. Do I need my glasses? I don't think I brought my glasses. There they are. Here you go. All right. Now let's talk about first the second wave of feminism, all right? Now, the second wave of feminism, I'm going to take this off the screen so you can see it better. From Wikipedia, it says second wave feminism was a period of feminist activity that began in the early 1960s and lasted roughly two decades before ushering in a third wave of feminism beginning in the early 90s. Right. So I just wanted you to know when it started, the second wave of feminism, which lasted 20 years before 1990. Now, what was the focus of second wave feminism? Let me show it to you. The second wave feminism focused on the legal, economic, and social rights of women. It top, its top priorities including gender roles, reproductive rights, financial independence, workplace equality, and domestic violence. So they're whooping your ass. Now they're talking about you no know, getting whooped. Now when it says um gender roles, this is where we start seeing a decay between gender roles and marriages and things like that. Because women stopped they got out of their place. They got out of pocket. Okay. 
they want to put themselves they want to usurp the authority of the man of the husband so they want to put themselves in positions of where they are actually the head of household this is why you meet a lot of women that are domineering the other thing that they said that they focus on was reproductive rights this is when you get the whole situation about women saying my body my choice and that does not all that and that does not only just restrict that to abortions it's anything they want to do with their body if they want to chop it off if they want to go get um, a penis, anything you want to get, their body, their choice. It began with that wave, okay? Financial independence. That's another thing, another thing they will focus on. This is where women say, I'm independent, get my own bag, okay? Now, mistakenly, a lot of women think getting a bag and being independent means being a leech on a man. When you're on me to get my resources, you're not independent, but they will take that, some of them, and think they're being boss bees, boss bitches. Okay, boss bitches. Who out there getting money off of men, okay? The other thing in workplace equality, which is a dangerous, excuse me, which is a dangerous thing for most companies now. Because now men are taking meetings with women with the doors wide open because they don't want to be accused of sexual harassment now, okay? What, but what it really meant is they want to have the same opportunities that men have. I think they could have some opportunity, but some opportunities are really just restricted towards men. Some things you shouldn't be equal, equal to do. You shouldn't be included in some shit. It's just life. Okay, now let me go into um, another part right there about feminism before I put these other clips up. <clears throat> third wave. Now, I want you to know about third wave feminism. This is where you've seen the lifestyle promiscuity. When you start seeing women really becoming hoes. If you think, if you're old enough to know this, if you was in the 60s, the women carried themselves and dressed differently than the women they did in the 90s. When they Even when they had musicians, women who were singing like Patti LaBelle and people like that, they had dresses on. They was modest when they sing um, the Supreme. Was it the Supreme? Diana Ross and all the rest of them and stuff like that. When women came out, they had dresses on or they looked more feminine or they looked more modest. Okay. After the second wave of feminism, where they got to the point where they can be boss bitches in the 90s. Is, and I know this because I lived it. This is when you start seeing women take off all their clothes. For example, I'm using music as an example. Janet Jackson, um, Aaliyah, people like that. They start get dressing less and less and less. Um, Kia, I think Kia, Kaya, Adina Howard and stuff like that. They're talking more about sexuality, singing about having sex, threesomes and stuff like that. Now they talk about everything when they sing. They talk about threesome, taking the butt, put put a perk dirty in the asshole, and they sing him. Sex with me is so amazing. They talk more about sex now than they ever did before. It is a direct result of third wave feminism. Let me show you. It says here that... um. Third wave feminists wanted to transform traditional notions of sexuality and embrace an exploration of women's feelings about sexuality that included vagina-centered topics as diverse as orgasm, birth, and rape. This is why you see so many women acting like hoes. It is the result of third wave feminism, which is built upon the foundation of second wave feminism. First wave feminism, which I will cover in a minute, had nothing to do with this shit right here. It really didn't. First wave feminism was about white women having the right to vote. That's all that shit was, to be honest with you. And then other waves of feminism came. Let me show you that and everything else. Let me put up. Now, it's important to know that according to the Pew, the Pew Research Center, 61% of U.S. women say feminism describes them well. Many see feminism as empowering and polarizing. So a lot of women says that that fits them well. In other words, false bitches. In other words, domineering women. In other words, women who don't want to listen to men. In other words, women who do not want to submit themselves underneath the authority of a man. In other words, women who do not want to be a lady. They want to run every goddamn thing. 61% of women in America identify as that. So there is some out there who don't believe in this bullshit, according to the Pew Research Center. Okay, but we see the majority of them that do. I got to put my glasses on for this or something. Hold on. Mm. All right. Now, I want you to see how do <clears throat> feminists feel about marriage? Now, look at this, y'all. It says feminists have long criticized the institution of marriage. Historically, it has been a fundamental site of women's oppression with married women having few independent rights in law. According to the Brown Education, um, you know, pew whatever, you can look at it yourself. Now, what that means is they have always attacked the institution of marriage, feminism, the second and the third wave. What do I mean? According to what I've just showed you so far about these people, right? They are against anything that resembles submission to a man. 
hold on one second y'all trying to pull something up there it is they are against everything so feminists a woman with a strong feminist mindset cannot make a marriage work she could want to be in a marriage she can get in a marriage but if she has been indoctrinated with this whole independent mindset i'm a feminist i'm a boss bitch and all this stuff like that that marriage is probably going to fall apart because she's going to put herself first now a feminist is a selfish individual they're very selfish they want what they want how they want it when they want it this is why it's destructive to women let's keep going excuse me did i put that up there yeah i already put that. excuse me put it down here here we go Do now this is the first wave feminism okay though ratification of the 19th amendment in 1920 fulfilled the principal goal of feminism's first wave guaranteeing white women the right to vote that's all that is all that first wave feminism represented in the 1920s that's when the first wave of feminism came about was in the 20s okay and it was all about having the right to vote now let's go in deeper into it okay now i'm gonna say it like this the ratification of the 19th amendment in 1920 fulfilled the principal goal of feminism's first wave guaranteeing white women the right to vote black women and other women of color face continued obstacles until passage of the voting rights the rights act of 1965 so they was mad because now after the what is it i can't remember what it was the abolition abolition um abolishment i can't remember what it was you might know what it is right now but black men was given the right to vote okay they were given a right to vote but yet the white women did not have the right to vote the white men could the black women could you know what I, mean? I mean the white women could i'm sorry the white man could and the black men could vote okay but the white women couldn't and the black women couldn't so white folks got pissed off white women so they fought and fought and fought and fought so that they can get that right to do so you get what i'm saying that's all it is um it was just about equality in the purest sense later on you know what i mean in 1960 that's when we had um black women could vote and all they put all that in but after the first wave of feminism that's when you start seeing the corruption of people's morality in the second wave okay and then it got worse in the third wave and there's going to be many more waves of feminism that's going to come around that's going to be worse and worse and worse so what really fucked y'all up is the second wave and the third the third just magnified sexuality and being a hoe the other one the second wave is what we're dealing with right now where women want to be boss bitches and divas you get what i'm saying that's where that came from now i'm going to show you some clips of women like, I just showed you the first one, a woman telling you that men don't want that. Now, I'm going to show you some clips of women who are tired of being feminists because they realize now that they was lied to. All right? Now, let's get into it. Give me one second. One second. Make sure you're going to screen. There it is. A lot of women have started to wake up, and they are realizing that what third wave feminism fed them and promised them isn't all it's cracked up to be. I mean, I cannot tell you how many videos come across my TikTok page, my X feed, all of it, that are just like this. Man, I feel lied to, lied to by the culture, uh, but I'm going to take full responsibility there, man. I fell for it. I fell for the boss bitch, the like... I, I could do everything by myself, that hyper independent bullshit. And I'm 31 now. And I still. Now, the have type of feminism that she's talking about, boss bitch and shit, that is the second wave of feminism. That's not talking about the being a whole part, which works in tandem with the second wave. The third wave and the second wave works together. They, works in, they work in tandem. But the second wave of fe feminism is the foundation of that third wave of feminism where everyone can be hoes and do what they want to do. I'm sexually free. I can be bisexual. I can be gay. I can be straight. I can be whatever the fuck. I, I can fuck rocks. I can fuck donkeys. I can do whatever I want. That is a result of third wave feminism. You get what I'm saying? So this is what she's talking about. That second wave is a mentality. Okay? The third wave is physical. Second wave feminism feminism affects the mind it affects the perception of self and your outlook on the world as a woman third wave is just do whatever you please physically physical pleasure do whatever you want so feminism attacks the soul the spirit the mind in the body it corrupts a woman's individuality totally 
don't have kids. I still don't have a family. And so many women around her age are reevaluating their lives, reevaluating what the hell they were focused on for the last 10 or 15 years and are realizing that they probably want to change everything. And to me, it's heartbreaking because these women, they really were lied to. The feminist marketing machine of the last 30 years was insane and not leaning into it. That's a Sheryl Sandberg joke. I am a woman. It was considered the weird and non-traditional path. If you didn't do that, you were considered the black sheep. In the comments of that video, one person said the 30s will do that. It's like a switch gets flipped, family over everything. But the sad thing is that used to just be the norm. From the beginning, from your childhood, family was everything. That is where you put your priorities. Now it's like you have to mature and age into realizing that that is what is most important. Which exactly. Is That's a good point. There, back in the day, in the old school, in the 60s and earlier than that, black women would teach their daughters family. What's important about family. The father would teach their sons. Go out, be a man, be able to provide for a family one day. Mothers would teach their daughters, be classy, know how to cook, have domestic skills so you can take care of your family one day. You didn't have to mature into shit because we were receiving. We were receiving instruction. We was taught. Now people are not teaching their daughters. They're not teaching their sons these things anymore. So you don't have to mature into this shit. You're supposed to be taught in this shit. Now you can mature like this lady was talking about a woman got old. Now she wants to go back and try to get family out. She done put a career over everything. When you mature at that level, at that type, at that rate, it's too late. When you have to get 34, I mean, 40, 50 years old, then you realize you want to be uh, a homebody, it's too late. Because you wasn't taught. You was taught the other shit. You were taught second wave feminism. To go out there, be an independent boss bitch, get your career. That's what you was taught. So you went according to what you was taught. Like they say train up a child in the way that they should go and won't depart from it so you got women who are teaching young daughters to go out there and be career women to make things happen for themselves so they go according so the teachers are really responsible for the fuck ups the mothers who are teaching their daughters that shit you are ruining your daughter's life instead of teaching them to be prepared to be a good wife to a husband you're teaching them to do it all on their own be by yourself make it happen okay it's your fault you don't have to return to this shit. You're supposed to be taught this shit. It's very sad. Another person said this. This is how you will heal our society. Glad to see more women waking up. Another girl said, I'm glad I'm realizing this at 26. I think she's meaning to say I still have a lot of time. Hopefully God puts that good man in my path. Another woman said, yes, I blame Beyonce. Independent woman song. The programming started in high school. I mean, that could be just a whole other episode and going through all the cultural icons and the entertainment that furthered this idea. The women do not need anything or anyone except their career and themselves to be happy. Now, around the same time that I saw that TikTok back in December, I was sent this story. 38 year old woman decides that she wants a baby and claims that she has been betrayed by feminism. And on Twitter, this got 8.8 .8 million views and the comments were lit up. So this article is about a woman who did a video for Fox. That's what the screen grabs are from. And she got very vulnerable about her life and her choices and all of it. But she was brought on to Fox because of an open letter that she wrote for Business Insider earlier in the fall. And I cannot believe I did not see this until last month because it is so good. And her open letter is entitled, I'm 38 and single. And I recently realized that I want a child. I am terrified that I've missed my opportunity. I told my friends and family that I'd never get married again. I needed independence. That's right. When you practice feminism, you miss your opportunity. You miss the bus. Because what happened is when you think like a second wave feminist, you don't consider the fact that you will age, that your eggs would be no good at a certain time, that you lose your beauty the older you get, that you're not going to remain as hot as you were in your prime years. Feminism blinds you to all that shit. Feminism just puts career. And let me say it like this. Second wave feminism just makes money the priority because in order for you to be independent you got to make money you got to get a career you got to get education to get the money feminism is all about materialism it's all it is the second wave and once you get that money that bag then third word on um, third wave feminism come in to where you can live your life how you want to throw your pussy out there fuck whoever you want don't worry about it in other words third word third <laughs> wave feminism encourages people to be whole of a filling career and space to chart my own course. And I didn't think marriage fit into that vision. I was content to look towards a future without a husband, children, or the trappings of a traditional life. But then after a bad breakup and her 38th birthday, she said that she began to feel an incredible urgency to find the relationship and stability to see me through the second half of my life. To my amazement, I began seriously thinking about marriage and children. I hardly recognized myself. I mean, society has told women that nothing matters except themselves, that they don't need anyone else, that they yep. shouldn't want anyone else. In fact, wanting a partner, specifically a male partner, 
partner is just indoctrination from the patriarchy. And so you need to completely reject that. Our society needs good women. We need good mothers. We need good families. And we certainly need more children. And I love that she discovered this, even if it's later on. Like she said, feminism teaches women that the ideal of a man leading or being with a man in a stable marriage is indoctrination from the patriarchy. In other words, it's biased information that we're passing down. No, it's actually divine because God made women for men and made men the house, you know, the leader of the house. So if you've got a problem with it, talk, take that up with God if you're religious. And if you're not, historically, men have been the one running shit. Hold on. Got something else to show you. I think her name is Sister. How you say her name? Sorhad, Sorhad Ali, I think. I can never pronounce her name for shit, but here it is. They did not tell us that all of that, uh, being my own person and I'm independent, would lead to separation, loneliness, celibacy, and lesbianism. They Facts. All this independent feminism leads to loneliness, women who are being bitter, women who want to say, well, I don't want no man. Man can't treat me right anyway because no man wants to accept your behavior, so now you want to go lick on some pussy and want someone to lick on yours, and so now you're lesbian. That's just my humble opinion. So it turns you off from your natural desire to be with men because what you're bringing to the table is a bunch of bullshit that men don't want to put up with, so men are rejecting you or you can't stay in a relationship with men, so therefore you decide to go eat a woman's booty. That's just what that is. They didn't tell us that if you give up the man, you're going to take one of these things and it's worse and it will destroy your nation. They made us think that it was some kind of glorified position to brag about the fact that I got my own job, my own credit card, my own car, so I don't need no man. I don't even know how we got that mixed up. Ain't none of that got nothing to do with having being with no man. We have some serious relationship problems that nobody has been able to address us on because everybody wants to pretend that this is not going on. Over 60% of our women are single, widowed, separated, or divorced. They don't have a man. The numbers don't lie. Like that uh, man said, women lie, men lie, but numbers don't. One last clip when we get up out of here. Hope y'all like this. Uh, one second. Listen to this black lady. She, she gonna speak like us, a black American, but I think she's African. And when she started getting frustrated about feminism, her whole accent changed. She's like, I don't know what to think about. You, you gonna see. Does anyone know how I can cancel my membership to the whole? That's how she gonna start. But let's keep going. Anyone know how I can cancel my membership to the whole feminist movement? Because it's not given what it was supposed to give, so I'm no longer interested. Even the word. You hear it? <laughs> that shit. That she got mad. I'm sorry. That's it. I'm too jumping in. Whole feminist movement. Because it's not given what it was supposed to give, so I'm no longer interested. Even the word feminist. What is feminine about me working hard and paying bills? Back then, I'm singing independent. I don't know what possessed me to be singing such nonsense. It was the work of the devil to be wanting equal this and equal that. How the man to be doing demanding things and the woman to be doing damsel in distress. Huh? I don't know what I would do without you. Because me, I need the man for every little thing I want to be calling my man, my man, my man. My, my, my. Because who'll be reaching the top shelf for me? Who'll be killing spiders? <laughs> Fine, babe, like me should be coming and killing spiders. Do I look like Zina the Warrior Princess? Listen, I don't know who brainwashed us. I don't know who started the movement. If it was Susan B. Anthony and the, the, the suffrage rights. But I'm suffering more today than I was yesterday. Now, when she's talking about the suffrage right, the suffrage rights, that's back to the first wave of feminism when it comes to voting. That's what she made reference to. But they're frustrated. Like she said, I don't think women should have equal rights either. I think they should have certain equal rights because the more freedom that you give women, the more out of control they become. That's why you're dealing with what you're dealing right now. And don't forget, you keep talking about the patriarchy and all this shit. The patriarchy, they're the ones who gave you the rights to do the shit that you're doing. All you did was vote, 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 vote or protest. It was the men who decided to say, okay, we'll give you this and give you that. Okay. And that was a mistake, gentlemen. I think they should have rights for opportunities for jobs and education and shit like that by land. I get that. But the rights that they have right now is keeping them miserable. Okay. You can't give everybody a lot of freedom and expect them to do right. Like if you have an eight-year-old kid, 10-year-old kid, and you give them complete freedom to run around the house, don't discipline them, don't let them understand consequences, just leave them in the house and go about your day and let them do whatever they want, you'll come back to a destroyed home. They'll tear thing down, going to be crying on the wall and shit because they, they're not mature enough to handle the responsibility of freedom. Freedom is something that you have to be responsible with, okay? When you just say, here, go. Do what you want. You're going to have problems. That's my humble opinion. All right, so you let me know what you think about this in the um, comments. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good one. We almost at thir um, 13,000 subscribers. We're going to keep on pushing until we get that 100,000 subscribers. I'll talk to y'all soon. You have a good one now, you hear? Ooh.